So I'm going to start covering uh, the digestive system or the first part of it in this video. Um, and we start with this idea of increasing complexity. So um, if you think of cells as being the basic building block for any um, living organism, uh, if you put a bunch of cells together that all do the same kind of job, uh, you call it a tissue. Um, and in fact, there are only four types of tissues you find in um, living things. So you have muscle tissue, obviously the, the muscle that makes um, things move, that contracts. Uh, we have nervous tissue, which would contain nerve cells, neurons, in order to um, send messages around to and from the brain and uh, around the body. Uh, you have something called connective tissue. And this is the stuff that most of your body is, is made up of. Have you heard of this stuff? Collagen, uh, which is found in your skin. Uh, that's the connective tissue. It holds all your stuff together, all, all the bits and things. Um, I think one way you can maybe imagine uh, your body is, is a bit like bubble wrap, where it's not very good bubble wrap, but you get the idea. There's our little bubbles. The stuff it sits on, the bubbles are like the cells, but the stuff it sits on is like connective tissue, like this stuff, collagen. So your body's actually made up of loads and loads and loads of this stuff, connective tissue. So there's a, a specific example of uh, a connective tissue. So muscle tissue, nervous tissue, connective tissue, uh, and the one that's a bit difficult to remember is called epithelial tissue. Um, and this stuff um, is the, the coating, I suppose, for organs. Um, so if you, let, blood vessels may be the, the easy one to think of. Here's a blood vessel. The inside of that blood vessel the inside lining is epithelial tissue. In fact, the outside lining of it is epithelial tissue. Um, if you take something like a kidney, why not, here's a kidney. Um, there's lots of cells and bits and bobs going on the inside, but it's like it's got a covering, a coating, and that's epithelial tissue. Okay, so those are the four types. Now, actually, in the book, um, it makes a point of another type of tissue, which it calls glandular tissue. Now a gland is just something that um, squeezes out, or not necessarily squeezes out, but produces a liquid. Um, so for example, your saliva glands in your mouth produce saliva, and they're, they're secreted into your mouth. Um, you have glands in your stomach, which secrete acids and enzymes into your stomach space. Uh, you have your, your tear ducts are basically glands, your tears are you know, liquid that is squeezed out onto the surface of the body. So that's what glandular tissue refers to. I'm not quite sure why they've put it in separately um, in here, but there we go, it's in the book. So anyway, we have cells and we have tissues. Uh, so tissue is a group of cells working together to do the same job. If you get a, a group of tissues working together, you would call it an organ. If you get a group of organs working together to do a particular job, you would call it a system. So the digestive system is a group of organs working together um, for the job of digestion. Uh, if you group of systems working together, you get the whole organism. So your, um, your respiratory system is basically your lungs, um, your blood system, which is involved with uh, getting oxygen around the body and getting carbon dioxide back out. Your reproductive system, a bunch of organs working together to reproduce. Of course, you put all these different systems together, and you've got the entire organism. Okay, so it, that's the, the the kind of idea that we're looking at. Now, digestion as a whole, if we're going to um, summarise, I suppose it's breaking down large, complex chemicals into smaller soluble chemicals or we could use the word molecules I suppose here doesn't matter one of these large co complex chemicals uh, is basically our food so all the carbs the protein fats all that stuff we eat those are the large complex by complex we mean there's, there's lots of different bits to them um, into smaller soluble chemicals soluble means it will dissolve in something that's going to be important later on when we start looking at um, uh, the, the various organs. So let's let's have a quick look at those. So we start off up in the mouth, uh, where your food is chewed, and that, of course, is going to break the food up into smaller pieces. Um, sometimes this is referred to as mechanical digestion, where your teeth uh, will mash the food up, and you, you mix it with saliva. Easy one to misspell. 
uh, that makes it easy to swallow, it lubricates the food. Um, we'd also have enzymes in here, so saliva produced from saliva glands in your cheek and underneath your tongue. Uh, and the enzymes in here, particularly the enzymes, um, we could call it a couple of things actually. If I call it a carbohydrase, first of all. If it ends in ASE, it means you're talking about an enzyme, so carbohydrates, protease, lipase, and so on. Um, specifically, it's often referred to as amylase, and what amylase breaks down is starch into glucose. So in this case, come back to this, our complex chemical might be starch, and the smaller soluble chemical would be glucose. So digestion is actually happening in the mouth. Um, the food is then passed down, um, you can call it the gullet, which is what they refer to in uh, the textbook. Esophagus is maybe a better name for it. You'll see an American spelling of this sometimes as well, which doesn't have the O on the beginning. Uh, it means the same thing, that this is the, the uh, UK spelling. Another useful term here is peristalsis, make sure I've got it right. And this is the idea that um, down the esophagus, which is a, a long tube, it's uh, that the muscles of the, the esophagus will contract and relax. And so contracts, relaxes, the next bit contracts and relaxes, and then it moves the food down by kind of squeezing it along, if you like. Um, so it, it's a, it, it doesn't happen in little blocks like I'm showing here, it's more like a bit of a wave action. I try and, and draw it. Uh, here's your esophagus. Um, and let's put a bit of food in there. So I'm not drawing it the other way around, but um, there's the bit contracting, and there's the muscles contracting, and then they'd relax, and then a bit further along would contract, and we've moved our lump of food. It's called a bolus, actually. Let's see if you have the proper name for it. The bolus is moved along by these squeezing and relaxing. Okay. Uh, it goes all the way down to the stomach. Now the bits of the stomach that are of interest to us in particular, uh, we've got this acid, which is actually hydrochloric acid, which does two things. It um, will basically destroy most of the, the bacteria and fungi, pathogens is a good word here. Pathogen means something that causes disease, because not all bacteria cause disease, but some do, the ones that do, and the virus, uh, sorry, the, the, the fungi as well that causes disease, we would call them a pathogen. Okay, so most pathogens are destroyed in the stomach acid, uh, but it also provides optimum, or an optimal, let's call it optimal pH, the optimal pH for uh, the enzymes to work. And when we get to enzymes later on, that becomes important. Um, the food is mixed around in here. It forms a substance, it's kind of a, a soupy substance called chyme. You also hear it pronounced chyme. Um, but chyme, I'm gonna pronounce it like that for now. Uh, so this is now passed into the small intestine. The first part of the small intestine, which is actually um, known as, let's just put all this down, the small intestine. First, whatever it is, about 20 centimeters, I think. Uh, it's, it's called the duodenum. So as the food, this kind of mushy soup that's coming out of uh, your stomach, um, is partially digested. In fact, the proteins, a lot of the protein is digested uh, at first in your stomach using protease enzymes, remember ASE meaning uh, enzyme at the end. So that would be an enzyme that digests proteins. The kind comes out, it's this mush, but it's also quite acidic. So one of the things that has to be done is you have to neutralize that acid. And that is done with the substance called bile. And bile is produced in the liver, it's stored in your gallbladder and it's secreted out into the small intestine. It also emulsifies, remember that means to break up from a, a large kind of blob into smaller blobs. Okay, and that makes it much more efficient for the enzymes to um, break the fat down. So the fats are emulsified by bile. Um, the fats are broken down by lipase enzymes. It then uh, passes through the small intestine where it is absorbed. Let's get a different colour. Um, so it's absorbed in the small intestine as well. Once this is soluble, it can absorb it into the blood. And this is done through 
structures called villi. These are things that sort of stick up like this. Projections, perhaps, if you like, of the um, of the wall of the small intestine. Always reminds me of um, those kind of bathroom mats you get. That's what, that's what it makes me think of. <laughs> and then inside these uh, inside these villi, there would be blood vessels all linked up. So all the, all the food is is digested into here and goes to the bloodstream. Key thing with the villi, they increase surface area. Uh, and once the food has passed through here and all the nutrients, refer to it as nutrients, don't say goodness, uh, the nutrients are absorbed, the um, fats, lipids, carbs, all that stuff, mi vitamins, minerals, some of them are absorbed here as well. It then goes into your uh, large intestine and in the large intestine or colon as it's also called, uh, the water is absorbed. Okay, and then what you're left with is anything which is undigested, basically that's fibre, and that then um, passes out into the rectum um, and eventually through the anus, which uh, is basically what we would then refer to as our feces or our poop.